Welcome to the Power of Cross Ministries. I am Joshua Trailer, and I just want to share you my testimony. I got saved on October 30th at 4.15 a.m. in the morning in 1997. I was 16 years of age. The night before, I went to a thing called Harvest of Souls. The church was putting on several skits about life. At the end, people were judged by God. Did it scare me? Yes, because I did not want to go to hell. I stayed... I stayed awake all night and my dad got up for work and asked what was wrong. I said I'm scared. I didn't want to go to hell. I was reading his Bible because at the time I did not have my own. I started in Genesis. My dad led me to the Lord that night in the living room on the couch. I lived for Christ until I turned 21 years old, moved in with my sister in Panama City Beach, Florida. I told my dad I could handle my faith on my own. I was wrong. He knew I would backslide. I started drinking heavily. Being 21, I wanted to go away of the world, explore new things. In the midst of all this, I was going to church, very active in a young adults group. After a while, I started smoking pot. Then something happened to me one night that changed me for the time being. That one night, I had a realistic dream. I dreamed I went to the bathroom and looked in the mirror, and I started to turn to the devil. I had horns coming out of my head. As I walked to the living room floor, I opened up the floor and saw hell, and since my sister and her family was not saved at the time, I threw all of them into hell. That was a extreme wake-up call in my life. I ended up coming back to the Lord that weekend and getting baptized. I went to a young adult's retreat in Tennessee, and the devil was still attacking me. He would not let me go. I ended up smoking weed at the retreat, so after we got back to Florida, I decided it was time to leave. I figured if I go back home, things would change, so I took it back. I took a bus back home, but the devil did not stop attacking me. I got a job, met some friends, and stayed out all night hanging at Walmart. Our town is really small, so there was really nothing else to do. I ended up smoking some weed at a party, and one of my friends tried to warn me not to do it. I didn't listen. That was the last time I ever smoked weed. It was laced with some white stuff, made me pretty sick. My friend took me to my car, and I went home. After a few days, I changed my life for good. But the next two years, something was coming, and it was about to not only change my life, but others around me, our entire family. I'm about to tell you what happened to me one week before December 1st, 2003, the passing of my mom, my precious mother. It started out with me having a toothache. Hurt it really bad, tried everything to get it stopped, even tried numbing gel. Not, not even that would help. My mom got up one night. She came to the kitchen and opened a big thing of peanut butter and started eating it by the spoonsful. Every time I look at the peanut butter, I think of her. She was sitting at the kitchen table. I walked into the kitchen and sat down at the table and told her what's going on. She asked me if I wanted one of her painkillers. I have no clue what kind of pill it was. It was prescribed to her. To this day, I have no clue what it was. I took it. And I told her I was not feeling good. About 15 or so minutes afterwards, she told me that she watched my eyes roll back into my head. She pulled me into the kitchen floor. I, I only remember sitting down. Don't remember anything between that and her laying me on the floor. I don't remember any of it. I was 22 years old. I was a Christian and I was ready to meet Jesus. I was never forced to believe in Jesus. I was raised in a Christian home, but my parents were the type that gave me free will. I didn't get saved till I was 16 years old. I was never forced into believing in Jesus. I wasn't brainwashed, and I don't feel like I'm brainwashed today. My mom told me she yelled for my dad. They told me they was praying for me. What well, I'm about to tell you may open your eyes more clearly to the truth. Heaven and hell is real. My Lord and Savior is real. The devil is real. After taking that pill, I was gone. There was no imagination. All of our lives just changed. My mom thought she killed her baby boy. I woke up on the streets of gold. I was laying the opposite way of how I was laying on the kitchen floor. God's glory was surrounded all around. I felt like I had been there forever. I did not have any worries, no pain. My mind had changed when I got there. I was not worried about anything on earth, not my friends or my family. I was thinking... I wasn't thinking of anything. It was just beautiful. Heaven is amazing. If I had to put a time on it, I was maybe there for 15 minutes. My dad says I wasn't gone that long, but it felt like forever though. 
where I was, I wanted to stay, but God told me that it wasn't my time. His words were, son, it's not your time. Then I heard my mom and dad calling me, Joshua, Joshua, Joshua. I woke up and I couldn't wait to tell my dad and mom what had happened and others about what I seen. 2 Timothy 1a says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. So do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord. What he has done in your life, don't be afraid to tell others. Don't be ashamed no matter what others say, even if they call you names, or even if they tell you you are a liar, don't back down. Don't be ashamed because what you say may get someone thinking, and that someone may get saved, and it will be worth it all. Return to thy own house and show how great things God had done to thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done to him. That is Luke 8, 39. This verse is about the man that was demon possessed, how he was healed and people couldn't believe their eyes. And some ran away into the city and country to tell others what had happened. 1 Peter three fifteen says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Psalms 119.46 says, I will speak of thy testimonies and also before kings I will not be ashamed. Don't be afraid to tell your testimony. Don't be ashamed to tell your testimony. You may reach someone with it to the kingdom. Psalm 66, 16 says, Come and hear all ye that fear God, and I will declare what he had done for my soul. Matthew 10, 32 says, Whoever therefore shall confess me before men, him I will confess also before my Father which is in heaven. And if you read Matthew 10, 32 in the Ant Verses, Therefore, the one who confesses and acknowledges me before men as Lord and Savior, affirming a state of oneness with me, that one I will also confess and acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. There's a lot of people today that walk around and think they're believers and say they know Jesus, when actually that is farther from the truth. No truth to it. They're putting on a front. What is worse is they go to church and act like the biggest church go ever. They act like a saint, but God knows deep inside they are a hypocrite. One day, if they don't get sincerely right within their heart, they're going to go to hell. If you're going to play church, you might as well go to the bars, to the clubs. Church is for those that are seeking God. It's a place for sinners to feel welcome. It's not a place for drama. It's not a place for gossip. It's a place for others to worship God. The church is for the people that feel broken and have nowhere else to turn to. Some are seeking something greater. Maybe some are here because they are growing in Christ. Maybe some are there because they feel the Spirit there. If you are not here for those these reasons, then why are you here? Why are you going to church? They may have been saved at one time, but when they start doing ungodly things outside the church, that makes you wonder what kind of testimony they are showing others. And where they are going to church, it reflects on the church also, and most people don't think about that. They only think about themselves. Like I said, 1 Peter 3.15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of hope that is in you with meekness and fear. The Ant Version says, But in your heart set Christ apart as holy, acknowledging him, giving him first place in your lives as Lord. Always be ready to give a logical defense to anyone who asks you to count for the hope and confident assurance is elicited by faith that is with you, yet do it with gentleness, gentleness and respect. Matthew 5, 16 says, Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. That is my testimony, and I hope you enjoyed it. Just remember to not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And until next time, just remember that you are very important, not just to this ministry, but you're most important to God. And remember one more thing. You're amazingly beautiful no matter who you are. Take care and have a great day and God bless.